Uh, welcome back to some more Hidden Cup uh, Sprite Party matches. I am your host, Kletos, and here with me are uh, two uh, very excellent casters. We got Warning Track. Ah, thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Yep, and Slappy Davis. I don't have any choice. I was conscripted. Yeah. <laughs> I'm this is kidding. your your usual slow casting team, although they have promised to go a little bit faster this time. Hopefully we'll get through, you know, an actual full match or two. We did negotiate down to 0.75 speed, but it's all good. <laughs> yep. If only we could get 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 that sort of granular uh speed control here. Anyhow, yeah. uh we got Yeah, no, the replay system really lacking, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come on now. We can only do like 0.5 and point, you know. Yeah, two it's times not it's not times. absolutely everything I could ever want to do. It's just most of them. Come on, what's going on yeah. here? All right. Anyhow, we got uh, two two matches to get through here. Uh, let me show the the current state of the bracket real quick here. We got first four of round one out of the way, and then we got uh, so we're gonna do M Maddie Hari and uh, Klaus uh, Fuchs. I don't want to say that last name incorrectly, and then uh, the James Bond and Ethan Hunt. I think that's a pretty uh that's gonna be a pretty interesting match to uh expert spies. And much easier to pronounce as well. Maybe not yes. to cast. Yes. That and we have a resident movie buff. Before we even get into that match, do you have a movie preference between the two of those? Oh, you know, people are gonna kill me for saying this, but I think I enjoy the Mission Impossible films a little bit more. Uh partially because there's just a higher uh baseline of quality. The James Bond films are kind of all over the place, right? But uh Definitely James Bond, a better character, but uh, now I especially like the Christopher McQuarrie Mission Impossible films, the last couple. Um, so I'm actually going to go Ethan Hunt. Don't yell at me, people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I can I can see it. Mm hmm Anyhow, uh, we'll get into the uh, first one here. Uh, we got the we got the draft ready, I believe. Uh, yes, I do. All right, so we're going to look at their uh, venue preferences. Okay, somebody really likes Balcony. Oh, my. Yeah, geez. And uh, not Gout. They don't like Gallery. Uh, and then they kind of like they like Pub a bit. They're okay with uh, Aquarium. And then the other, other player very much likes Library. Doesn't uh, – and uh, likes Aquarium somewhat. Does not they, neither player particularly likes uh, Veranda, and actually they both don't really like Gallery that much. They're both kind of okay with Courtyard. Uh, yeah, just to remind everyone, as, as the as the image that you're looking at kind of suggests, but just to make it totally clear, every uh, entrant into this tournament was asked to rank their venues uh, more yeah. or less in terms of what they like more or less, and uh, we put all this into a computer. Um, that's yes. the way I'm going to choose to say that and just sound really old and be okay with it. Uh, and it spits out the actual draft, quote unquote. Yes, the players themselves would not do not have any any. Uh, this is uh, I, I actually myself do not quite understand how uh, Gabiotron works. I just no. trust in it. <laughs> yeah, it's just Oops. the algorithm, people. It controls our lives. Give into it. it. Looks like I broke it slightly, and it's just a screen this time. But all right, never mind. Forget the algorithm. We're going back to state of nature. Yep. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm really curious that Tan had just neutral on both people. I have not met that many players that would agree just on total neutrality about Tan on such a hater love map. Yep. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yep. There's a lot of hate. There's a lot of love. There aren't too many people who are like, yeah, ah, Tan, I can take it or leave it. Yeah. So interestingly, uh, Library was uh, Klaus Fuchs' uh, number one, was there one of their number one uh, or the only one they gave? A rating for so yeah and matahari only had it at three right so that didn't counteract yeah. it very much which is why we're seeing library yeah makes sense yep and then uh aquarium and courtyard they both were like kind of i think i think they each had a two and a three on on, on them but it was like reversed or something like that so well, yes. because we don't know who these people are, my only real analysis is that this makes for a happy host in Kletos, and a happy host makes for a happy cast. Yep, and yep, we will get into it uh, right now. Yeah, Terrace was also another one where they were both ranked as three, so neither player is going to be on their favorite or least favorite maps, really. Yeah. It's going to be a bunch of maps they're familiar with. But no Yeah, that's, I mean, that seems to be the Gabriotron way. <laughs> we'll get, but anyhow, I think we're, we're good, ready for this first one. Yeah, if you liked ranked choice voting, you just got your wish, and it produces Terrace. Yep. Yeah. 
There you go. All right. I think I am ready to go. All right. It's going to be... uh. Be repairing my... the Gabriotron while you guys are casting these matches. Yep. Steam's coming out. Hit it with a wrench a few times. I'm sure that'll work. That's how you fix algorithms. I'm mm -hmm. not really a programmer yeah. at all. Uh, I know this says Gabrio, but I I assure you that's just a joke. Just a meme, sort of. This is Matahari uh -huh. as the spy on Aquarium. Playing as Seek in three, two, one, planet. And that's bottom left shark to start. For those who don't know, the shark always starts in the bottom left from the sniper's perspective or the top right, but it follows a set schedule after that. So without time ads, you always know where it's going to end up at various points in the game. Gabrio, uh, so to speak, uh, enters next to their seduction target, gets a white test 34%. Again, that is Matahari playing a spy the first game. The immediate piece of information I saw when uh, Seek took over was a really good redirect back into conversation to get next to our seduction target. I liked that a lot and showed a little bit of familiarity with Micro and getting into those tough conversations to make sure you get that early flirt. And taking a cue from that big old shark, we have not really stopped moving. Right after the flirt, we don't wait for the cooldown timer. We get rid of the drink and go right to the side statue. We're going to get two inspects right here. Top Shark coming across, but obviously we're not going to try any shenanigans just left. We still have three minutes left. We don't even hang out at the pad for that long, and I got to imagine we're going to go find that seduction target again. That looks like it. Hard turn right in next to them, and let's see how many seconds we even wait. Just a few, and this is a breakneck pace already. This one's green, 82%, which means anything other than the worst flirt possible will complete that mission next. We're going to go right into a fake afterwards, too. I wonder if we were trying to time a drive-by bug or something. I'm not sure what it is because I can't make sense of the decision otherwise. Maybe just a great time. Nobody, nobody out of conversation. Uh, yeah, it just looks like and we're going to take the low light and wheels, and uh, Twin was just barely on the edge. Like, you could, like, there was a plausibility to them not being in there. Unfortunately, we don't get credited for the fake like uh, Teal apparently does but I think that might've just been like a good timing thing. Um, we are going to take the delegate while leaving during the animation, but it looks like uh, we're not being credited for that, meaning that we take without taking a drink. Um, Which is a hard tell, right. Which is a hard tell if it's noticed, but by the way, it seemed to coincide with the shark. I think the idea was to get that delegate in the wake of the banana bread without ever being seen at bar. And we were seen walking away, so I'm not sure if it's banana gonna work. Bread. We are gonna do a real banana bread this time, and I gotta imagine we're gonna do a purloin right after. But I think that was the goal. I think that was a bit of a shark trick. The idea was to do the delegate cheese, walk away without taking a drink and not be seen there. But I feel like it's probably not gonna work. Klaus might be onto it, although we don't know who either player is, so I don't really have a good sense of their skill level. Uh, we have not delegated the list yet. We do it right now. I'm sorry, we have, and it just took, rather, just took at the edge of the range. It's going to be Taft, who's going to walk back and probably enter the same conversation with us. He is. We finished reducing the target in the meantime, and now we're an inspect away with 90 seconds left. And the question is, were we even seen there? Were we even seen as a possible purloiner? Yeah, there's a lot of laser hovering on us. Oh, I think that's a missed shot. I think that actually I mean, it didn't matter either way, but I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be a shot on the person coming across Ambassador at the very end. I mean, uh, this is a seduction target, yeah. So it absolutely it, might be, but it, the, the nice thing is then that either way it was going to be a sieve shot. You'd hate to see a game turn on that, but in this case, just totally clean on the purloin is my guess, and therefore a sieve was going to get shot one way or the other, especially with a banana bread pack. Yeah, it looks like it was supposed to be on um, on our on our flirt because they left conversation near Ambassador right at the end. Uh, and what's interesting is I was actually going to be anticipating the opposite kind of thing where either we were going to mission complete or we we're going to get shot because we were at such a pace during that game. Wow. Yeah, I think you might be right on the miss shot. But again, uh, I'm relieved then that it was going to be a sift shot either way, if that's the case. It can be hard to tell sometimes. Um, either way, it's going to be one nothing Matahari, and now Klaus on the spy side after having given up that sieve shot, playing his green dress on Aquarium. In three, two, one, playing it. That was a very aggressive game from Matahari, and it'll be very interesting to see whether or not Klaus returns serve, plays the same kind of game, or, or takes their time. There's a bar rush, statue rush, everything. Everything is happening right now. There's a lot of activity. This is a really bad way for the sniper to start an Aquarium game. That's a great just casting tip, by the way, uh, chat. If you don't, if you can't actually keep up with anything, just everything, everything is happening. <laughs> it works every time in all situations. Uh, Things are happening, loud noises, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I can't possibly list them all. Yeah, so, even I have a governor on the word count per minute. That's true, and I just think it's a, such a fascinating like uh, beginning with Aquarium against an unknown player is such an interesting game theory decision about how you want to play it. Because how do you, how would you just assume with no knowledge of the other person, 
uh, what kind of game you're going to see out of Aquarium. One of the game, one of the game types with the most um, clear spy tendencies. Uh, so I was really, I was really curious to see such aggressive play coming out because aggressive play can get you killed no matter who you're um, being sniped against. Um, but it just in the end, someone else gets shot anyways, which is impressive because we were going pretty quick and someone still got shot. Yeah, Klaus got a green flirt at bar, by the way, and that's still all we have there. We did pick up a delegate, though. We did lean into that bar rush and become one of maybe five or six people who could have a purloin, but we're really trying to thread the needle. We are at the back conversation, which means that when we delegate, it's not going to take very long to actually get there, but it looks like we're not trying to do it. We're going to go around the conversation, pick up a fingerprintable briefcase. We can still be B here, I think. Is this a trick? Is this a trick? Fingerprinted briefcase, stand in the center. We are trying very hard to act like an AI and get a low light, or maybe we were trying to time it to the shark and failed. That's the question. We're going to pick up a highlight for that total bit of nonsense. The delicate uh, per line timer expires. We have no intention of doing it, it looked like. That is one of those moves where it's either a very experienced player that didn't quite do it right, or it's just a comedy of errors, and you have no idea which, because the line between the two is so fine. Banana Bread, Bread comes off. It's fake, though. It is green also. It's going to let off two low lights. That's not bad. That's two really good contacts in the first two games. But we already have a lot of suspicion for that weird maneuver, and we only have two-thirds of a flirt and one fingerprint to show for it. Yeah, I really was expecting to see a, a delegate with briefcase in hand behind the shark to try to get a low light or uh, potentially even just get that delegate off without any um, problems. But um, we just kind of sat there in the middle of the conversation circle uh, we do. We are going to be picking up that highlight for that trouble, and that's going to be. Oh, but doesn't matter, Smallman. Smallman. It doesn't matter, Smallman. Uh, so the other casting trick, in addition to saying everything is happening when you can't possibly list them all, is when Smallman shot. Don't bother trying to explain it because it explains itself. Kind of interesting though, because I didn't think we were like we were going to mission complete there, and it felt like Klaus might have felt that highlight too. My guess is, as we, as you mentioned, sort of probably trying to delegate while doing that, maybe not be seen taking the fingerprint at all, maybe try to hit a green banana bread or something like that. Regardless, it felt very close to being a good maneuver, but didn't quite get there, and it turns out we're bailed out by the inherent suspicion of the small man. And it is 1-1 with two sieve shots on Aquarium. Now going into Courtyard. Contain your excitement, Kletos. Matahari as the spy. I was going to add that Smallman had a bug path, obviously, because it's, you know, everybody yeah. has a bug path on Aquarium. And I believe, I my, my thought about that shot is he's going into those bookshelves and maybe they were afraid of some sort of shark cheese. Yeah, the middle shark was going to be, or sorry, top shark was up next. I was thinking the exact same thing. But yeah, I don't, I don't fully understand it. it. Yeah, it didn't make didn't make that much sense, but I mean, I couldn't think of anything else. Yeah, and yeah. that can be that might be a reason we see shots on aquarium that otherwise don't make sense. Is they look like setups for shark cheese where you're hidden behind the shark for the entire 10 second countdown. There's been so much discussion about that publicly after the Platinum Games Lazy Bear versus Opie rights and then again versus other players after that and it's been copied a little bit too already. That's become so public and so discussed that you got to imagine there's going to be some sieves that are going to get shot just for standing near some of these dangerous sites. As the seconds yeah, well, are waiting so, down. Someone attempted it uh, la last week in a manner similar to what Noob did with the clanking. Well, yeah. Harry, well, Mata Harry goes tuned to a Harry meta, and then we step into the <laughs> courtyard too. Yep. All right, go for it. In three, two, one, playing it. I admit, I'm mad I didn't think of it. <laughs> playing as Teal. We're on courtyard. Hopefully, a little less insane here. Possibly going too far the other direction. That's an incredibly short window visit, and we could do a weird, cheeky little bug here. Early statue visitors taking up highlights and the guest list on the other side, but no, Klaus is now protecting against it. They weren't at first, and our seduction target leaves after the white test. 34% doesn't go very far, though. We're obligated to leave here, and I think we left a little early in that idol, but we did it for the briefcase. That's a good reason, at least. We're going to get a fingerprint on this, I think. Yep. Get it as we're walking, and let's see how this return looks. So far, it looks fine. I'm is not sure about the angle. Yeah, great start, though, because just because in general, you're able to split those. The, the earlier you get your first fingerprint, automatically, that's the wider the window you have to get your second fingerprint, right? So mm -hmm. you could actually get, like, the bookend to your entire play style around getting the first fingerprint, which a lot of the times can be that counterintuitively not suspicious thing. So you play out the rest of your game maybe looking for either a, a, a nice subtle fingerprint or you're just going to try to force the fingerprint late and because you did that's the very first thing hopefully not be noticed that's that it's gonna be a red purloin by the way in the meantime we got a, another flirt but it doesn't matter because this guest list is flashing flashing off and on and yeah that's just over that was a very promising game i'm very surprised that we even attempted the purloin with that fingerprint already
in pocket like that for the exact reason you mentioned. And not only that, one thing that we didn't discuss before is it didn't look like they were setting up for the purloin. The ambassador there was kind of incidental. The seduction target left at a time where they were not obligated to take the case because it wasn't really takeable yet. So we were obligated once we were left alone. Who could possibly plan that? It sort of just fell in our laps if the sniper notices the sequence of events. Might have been close to free compared to most prints at least. That's just really unfortunate, though. I will say a lot of aggression, a lot of short window stays, a lot of movement, just like we saw in that first aquarium game. Matahari with their foot on the gas, and they get burned for it. That is going to be two to one for Klaus now, playing as white dress on Courtyard in three, two, one, playing it. Don't quite understand the decision, the drink request, the purloin, any of it, but... When you see a spy that's aggressive like that, usually there's a bit of impulsiveness in their game. Opportunism, too. It's opportunism when it works and is brilliant, and it's impulsiveness and rashness when it doesn't, and that was the downside we saw of that aggression. I want to also jump in on what you're saying about the drink request. I completely agree, because not only was it a bit... Uh, they, they had it planned out, apparently, with the drink request, but the Toby was just about to offer to White Dress in the previous game. So and very the noticeable, yeah. Came, exactly. The redirect was very, very noticeable. Two low lights possible, Smallman and uh, Leopard, I think, maybe? No, 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 it was Hare, who is at Statues. Leopard split right afterwards. That's a really good banana bread, though. Very, very good. We are in this smaller conversation with the real DA. The SDA had a fuller conversation, but still, a lot of people have a real. Only a few low lights, you'll absolutely take it. But we have no flirt progress. We're right next to the Ambassador. Eventually, we violate their personal space, and they get the heck out of there. We do not take the bug. It was guarded pretty effectively by Matahari. Klaus is going to go to Windows because our seduction target has just left where they were. So we're going to see where they end up. We're going to watch check. No time ad. And we need to get some flirt progress very, very soon. We've got two minutes left. Green Dress takes our spot in conversation. We bounce off this conversation twice as the ambassador enters. We have bumped into the ambassador and even attempted a bug without it taking. A lot of suspicion going right through that conversation. And it feels like we now are numero uno on the hit list. Yep. And there's the highlight for basically no progress. Like the highlight that was taken not on a um, not on any actual mouse over, but on a key over. Uh, I think specifically trying to hide the highlight. Yep, because you don't necessarily know, but they must at least suspect. And oh no, we've gone from red purloin into a red swap. I don't think we're trying to frame anybody. It doesn't matter. We were already the top suspect, and we've hardly gotten anything done. Spies fare a little worse on courtyard than aquarium. Stop the presses. It's two to two, just like that. Spies lose on a red purloin and red swap, respectively. The latter, not too bad. White is about as bad as red, I would say. You either see it or you don't on Courtyard. We didn't see it, I don't think, but I don't think we needed to. Either way, we're all knotted up. Matahari now playing his wheels on Library in three, two, one, playing it. And I'm a little bit sad about that um, about that swap because at first I thought it was an interesting take on a uh, trying to red swap, put down, and run away while the sniper had been lingering on the other side of the map but it looks like it might've just been that we were flustered when another person came in and took away our inspects. So yes. I think that we actually tried to maybe mouse wheel down to inspect to quickly inspect the left statue before the uh, statue we were holding. Um, but uh, we might've gone too far in red. And then when you see a swap come up, you're already flustered because you didn't even mean to. Yep, Matahari gets a quick flirt in with uh, Pencil Stash, our seduction target. Not right next to them, but enough to get 30%, so we're going to need to green at some point if we want a three flirt. We're going to go break this up by going to the yellow bookshelf, and I think come right back, and there is room between one of the twins and our seduction target, and we're going to take that spot exactly. And do we hit the green? We do, so we get to 81%. Even a very bad flirt will finish this now. That's the green we needed, so we are in three flirt range eventually, and we still have almost four minutes left, so we could easily decide to timer flirt, but Matahari is not going to do that. Stop if you've heard this one before. They're being very aggressive. They turn into the ambassador and crash through the center of a conversation to not bug. I'm not sure what the idea is here. The only through line in these games is to continue moving. The through line is through the CCs, and I can't remember if it was actually uh, um, uh, Kloss that was also doing um, uh, paths straight through CCs. We've seen more spies in the middle of conversation circles than I think that I've seen in any recent cast. Uh, and I'm, and they weren't usually being forced, and we haven't gotten overtly punished for them that often, um, but they don't seem to be rewarded with any lowlights of any sort. We're going to go to center statues, and uh, by the way, an AI is going to come at the same time, and we are not going to get that first inspect off, very similar to what you were theorizing about the previous courtyard game there. So we're not going to be able to finish this unless Taft puts it down, or we want to go into a third cycle, and that's not going to work at all. Matahari does wisely put this back down. Gets just the one inspect, though. Doesn't do the one 
that they were actually holding, I think because they hit a white, and because they tried the left statue, even though it was obviously not going to take, and therefore wasted their time on that. But we're still going to have to do a second one anyway. We're going to do a full 360, a donut, if you will, as wheels, bumping into the ambassador, again without taking a bug. We mentioned earlier that maybe that briefcase maneuver on Aquarium suggested a very high-level play that just didn't quite go as planned. But now, I think after a few games... We can maybe conclude this is a slightly less experienced player given some of these mechanical problems. That's a fake, though. That's a good little move. That's a green split on the fake into yellow bookcases where we've already been before. Will it garner the low light? It does not. The laser hovers over us, considers, and decides against it wisely. And there's two minutes left, and basically nothing has happened since that four-minute mark where I mentioned we were almost done with the seduce. Yeah, not only that, but when uh, the sniper didn't have a quick rotation over to the other side of the map, so by the time we were at yellow bookcase, it might have even looked like a late... Uh oh Hold that thought. White purloin. White purloin. Totally on screen. Totally on screen. Shot in the back. And you're right, by the way. That was one where you wanted the sniper to be on the ball. You wanted them to look over quickly on the split so you get the low light. But when they take several seconds, then they know. They know by the time they look over, they can't afford to low light anyone who's had a conversation, right? Because they decided not to look over when it happened. Yeah, I agree that I think that these are lower but still somewhat experienced players because they have a lot of the uh, knowledge about what they want to do, but the mechanics seem to be a little bit lacking. Now, that said, there could be nervousness because you don't know who your opponent is. It could be really uncomfortable for some people. But um, right now, I'm leaning towards uh, maybe maybe bronze or below in that kind of parlance. Yeah, and the action test rate as well. It seems like it's been pretty low anecdotally, certainly on the missions that have really counted, purloin swap, things like that. And Oh boy, either way, Klaus takes the lead, 3-2, to two, now has to spy on library as Kane in 3, 2, 1, playing it. I will say that the best players in the game have had sets far messier than this, and this is a small sample size, so who knows? We're just using the data that we have, even though the sample size is small. But so far, would say definitely a lot of mechanical errors, but big plans. That is an early green purloin at Windows. We are right next to Smallman, which kind of just means, like being next to the Ambassador, you're probably being watched just because you're standing near them. But we do get out of there pretty quickly afterwards. Let's see if we can get a bit of reject chain going. The cast member does not take the list. Obviously, that's good at least. There's a redirect from Toby, and they're going to go all the way to the other side of the venue, and this purloin is still hanging. This could be absolutely brutal. Yeah, Klaus just needs to not mess this up. I am almost positive that we will see an early shot from Mata, um, if we're able to hold on this, we just have to not try to do too much, even honestly a time ad in the next minute or there so, just to make sure it marinates a bit. There's a bug, there's a bug while the camera comes over and the list was taken by Arn Sorry on the opposite side of the venue and a zoom just happened and it's possible that the Perlin was not noticed until just now after another drink taker and they might low light everyone on this side of the venue, do they? Everyone but the spy. The spy is behind the pillar, which normally hides you from suspicion, but in this case, stopped them perhaps from being lowlit. No, exactly. That was going to be precisely my point. We actually put ourselves out of vision, which really burned us, unfortunately. Oh. Now, that said, there's going to be so much um, pressure on the highlights over here that we are, I'm still saying, we're like 60, 70% yes. on win. Um, but uh, right now, uh, uh, we could have been a little bit better off. We could have had the guaranteed win, basically. Yeah. And we already have the bug, and that's nice, and we're in really good shape here, but I don't think we have to do anything unless this conversation just sits there and doesn't move, which is what's happened so far, by the way. Matahari, the main thing here is that they're showing what they think is confidence that they did not miss the purloin, right? They're showing that it happened recently, and that's why I'm willing to highlight for proximity to the actual tray when I noticed it. What we know is that they took actually a fair bit to notice it. They did not notice the actual purloin, and they did not notice a drink taker afterwards, which was white dress, by the way. Seduce is done in the meantime. Three missions done. We're not low lit, but we might as well be, perhaps. We can still get a lot done here. We still don't have the contact. Contact inspect at this point probably just wins the game. But does Klaus know that? When you hit a green purloin like that early in the game and you run away and it doesn't take right away, you can usually guess that there's a pretty high chance that you're low lit. Yeah, contact would be really fascinating right now because all of the, um, all of the highlights would be either out of conversation or without a DA. And I'd be yep. really interested to see how uh, Mata would react to that. So it's yep. a good thing for us that we didn't take it. But Sorry, the really statues. Fascinated. Stars and statues, this is really big. We're going to get a green. Oh, wow. Difficult fingerprint off the drink. That is absolutely brutal, even if you're a suspect and we're not. Sorry, is it statues? That's very big. And you're right, by the way. Klaus can have no way of knowing that the Perlin was take took so long to be noticed. So I don't think they can understand how much suspicion is on those people. But if we can get a BB for sorry, I think that might prompt a shot. But this looks like the absolute best way to finish. It looks like they almost know what the sniper's lights are because that's exactly what you'd go for if you knew that you did not get the low light, but were also not a suspect. Way. You'd get that print. BB comes off. 
one more print's gonna do it, and we've got 100 seconds to find it, and that's if somebody else doesn't get shot first, and the sniper is zipping around. Sorry, does have a real BB. Alice does as well, and splits right afterwards into green bookshelf. She is moving around quite a bit, and we know Matahari likes to move around, and sometimes the way you play a spy is what you think is suspicious as sniper. This looks almost definitely like a win. The question is, how are we gonna win exactly? Sip shot, mission win, fingerprint, what? Yeah, it looks like we're looking for the fingerprint. We had to go pretty far. Before, I was a little bit worried because we were still having a Sniper whip over to guard the conversation circle with us plus a bunch of lowlights. So to me, that says that we weren't completely written off yet. That said, I think if we grab a subtle fingerprint, even actually, honestly, going after that briefcase once it's set down, it looks like pretty much a win right here. I think that Klaus is a little bit worried because the laser is actually really near us right now. Um, yeah. Well, three of the highlights are near us, too, and uh, that's probably a big part of that, as a matter of fact. We're going to go for this briefcase. Here it goes. Here goes big moment. Either we're a huge suspect for the for the furloin, actually, and the lights are betraying the suspicion. Uh oh, look at this laser. There's a highlight for the print. Would you really shoot though after the highlight? Four seconds left. Doesn't look like it. It looks like we just got on the sniper's radar when we completed our last mission. Well, there you have it. Um, honestly, I'm a little bit surprised there wasn't a shot on Sari at that point. Uh, if we were really sure about the purloin chain being in there, and Sari went in for um, uh, for inspect, sorry, had opportunities for the other for another mission. So I think we were just caught off a, a little off guard. That said, one thing that I I do tend to emphasize about early Perlin on a map like Library is that you get to watch those seven remaining missions much harder. So you actually have a pretty good mission count if you Perlin early, getting the uh, the other four missions. So perhaps we knew that sorry was just shy of getting that last mission. In the end, it didn't matter. But if we were part of that chain. Even if it had a really nice chain behind it, I think we actually would have gotten shot. Mata had a good grasp of how many missions were out there. Yeah, you're absolutely right in that the mission count is very important, and you can feel much more confident about it when one of the early missions is either purloin or swap, and you're sure it's taken place, because then you've got it narrowed down. You figure very little could have happened before that. Maybe a bug, right? Perhaps a bug. But it felt like they were probably waiting for Sari to go to statues again and finish those inspects, because it was a side statue visit. So probably waiting that out felt very confident, but that's what it is, right? It was confidence that they had mostly caught the purloin and narrowed it down. If they were less confident, they would probably take a more aggressive shot, and while it might not have resulted in a win, and it would have given them a better chance at winning, as opposed to being certain that you had that mission countdown and that you had the suspect pool correct. Either way, that is a really solid win from Klaus. They're going to go up four to two now and force at least a tiebreaker, if not an outright win. Again, it's we play 10 games, six wins at outright, five goes to tiebreak. Klaus needs just one sniper win here on Tan to force at least a tiebreak. It's going to be Matahari answering as spy, green dress, Tan, three, two, one playing it. They have not let up in any of their spy games. Let's see if this is any different. Yeah, I was going to say this you would think would be re uh, relatively similar to how they played on Aquarium, being sort of similar maps, and because they weren't truly taking advantage of the shark timings, to me that makes this map kind of similar and that there's kind of a lot of noise in it. Uh, we are across from the Ambassador, so we'll see if we take this, uh, this bug, if they rotate around us. There's a flirt, 34% white, and the banana bread is also white, banana and the ambassador bread. leaves during it. And the SDA is out of conversation, so this is the only conversation that has a real. Let's see if the sniper notices and adjusts their lights accordingly. It doesn't look like it so far. It looks like they're going to go totally agnostic on this. So we're actually making good progress again as Matahari. We idled once in the other conversation before going to get that flirt, which is Smallman, by the way. Sometimes you'll see Smallman as a seduction target more than you would expect, specifically because it's the only role other than Spy you can give Smallman that ensures they will not be a cast member and therefore a free low light, and that can matter a lot on Tayen, as the aquarium shot showed you. Nothing has happened since. We're just going to timer flirt here, it looks like. We are in a very buggable position, though, if and when the ambassador walks by us. Here it comes. Nope, goes the other way, but that was 50-50. If they go the other way, it's just a free bug. Fl flirtation timer does run out, and we hit a green this time, 85%. Any flirt will get that done. Two minutes left. Yeah, I don't know if they're, if the uh, sniper class is going to be subscribing to the people in the back conversation that just sit there all game on Tayen are suspicious or not school of thought for, for Tayen. Um, because we are definitely falling under that category if we've done so, uh, which also incidentally is going to put Smallman as a suspect if they buy into that kind of gameplay. We do get the fingerprint on this book here. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much of a reaction. I actually kind of like this um, because really you're not, sometimes you put the ambassador out of your mind when they go to books on. Um, yeah, on because you think they're safe. I don't have to worry about the bug now, but you exactly. do have to worry about something else. Yeah. 
and because there's so much other stuff you have to worry also because um, a lot of players will watch ambassador at bookcases not because of the um the print but because they're worried about the path coming out of the print because almost certainly they're going to be pathing by some people that could reverse bug yep so sometimes they miss it entirely and there is going to be another book print which uh -oh. and a white print. purloin we again we have a print going into a purloin anyway and it's matahari again it's a little better than it is on courtyard at least but it's another white test and we are a huge suspect, and there's the shot. There's the shot, just like that. Once again, we get a print, what looks like a really good, solid, clean print, and instead of trying to finish that way, we're just presented with the guest list, and we can't resist. I don't think for a moment that Checker is one of the participants in this tournament, but if I didn't know better, that's who I'd be looking at right now, given these impulsive purloins that do not seem to fit with the rest of the game plan. Yeah, so this is a really good example of something I'm going to try to hammer in I mean, a lot of well, my Well, they were actually happened. offered a drink kind of early, much earlier, and they rejected it, so I don't think it's yeah. Checker. Yeah, well... Checker would have it, purloined right it's definitely, there. It, it's definitely not Checker, who has 10 pending SEL matches as we yeah. speak. So, no, definitely not, but it's certainly reminiscent of, and certainly a level of impulsiveness on Purloin that we don't see in too many players. Mm -hmm. But what's really sad, though, is we're seeing the beginning of these games are just really solid. The aggression is good, but it's smart also. It's calculated. Those prints look so promising, and yet it ends up with another dead spot. Yeah, because I was going to say the, the 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 tone of these games has been a problem with coherence, where they're getting a lot of stuff done, but they're not focused in the silos that you should get done, meaning that we had we were just one foot away and one fingerprint away. Why would we dump all that energy into those missions, especially on a map like Tan, where they just need to get their hooks into you mm -hmm. um, to just purloin? Because yeah. you put yourself on their map as a, as a potential spy, and then you purloin. On other maps, I buy into it because maybe there's some mind games you could play with it. But on Tayen, where the sniper is desperate for information, you're giving it to them. Yeah, potentially. I mean, I can definitely see ways that you might want to purloin there. But the problem is you're probably credited with bug anyway because you were sitting in a spot specifically that is very suspicious for bug. The main way, if you want to purloin there, you want to purloin in a spot that's good for purloin but not as good for bug. And there's a lot of overlap there at least. But in this case, it would have looked potentially like our fifth mission. And I think you at least need to do it when the other three are finished so there's only 10 seconds to react because that shot would have come it looks like very late in the countdown so i think the timing is part of it too it wasn't a particularly good spot either our back is to the sniper right there you know when the guest list goes up when the tray goes up they're not going to be obscured by the shoji you know that for a fact so i think if you want to go purloin there a case can be made for it but the timing and the location makes me think it was not exactly planned because there were you were going to get better shots there right especially after being in that bug spot anyway Indeed. whatever it is klaus wins Five to two, chance to bring this home as spy on Tayen as general in three, two, one, planet. Hey, Jack, it... who's who's the uh, seduction target? I don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't matter. Well, it's totally incidental, totally random. Klaus takes control, talking not to their seduction target, but just a twin here. It looks like. So actually, leaning into things like General Queen, is that a bad thing to do as uh, in Hidden Cup, or is it a way to obscure yourself, you know? If you're <laughs> yeah. that, like, this could be track, for all we know, right? Yeah. Leaning into the fact that he, people know that he hates it, and then <laughs> you, you pick you put Queen, uh, Queen General, throw people off the trail. I like it. I like it. I will neither confirm nor deny that that's something I would or wouldn't do or despise or love. Uh, green Flirt, by the way, 51%. This pairing does pay dividends sometimes, apparently. Uh, I will say that the Flirt pairing stuff, probably not a big risk on Taya. That's uh, not the kind of thing that tends to be your downfall. Looks like we are going to probably just timer Flirt here. Small Woman is not the seduction target. Also not a cast member, so we lucked out a little bit there. Has a highlight because he's small, and that's pretty much it. Ponytail also has one for a statue visit, and there goes Green Dress as well to center statue, so a lot of people are going to potentially completing inspects. Are we lining up on Smallman already? We are lining up on Smallman with the safety off. An ambassador was in the direct center of our conversation for that entire time, uh, and we weren't actually... People in the conversation didn't seem to be getting suspicion for it, but it was this really awkward move where anybody in that conversation could bug... Uh, the ambassador because they were just sitting in the direct center uh, but it seems to have gone more or less unnoticed we didn't actually even take the bug but man would i be suspicious of the people in that conversation if that went off yeah and if klaus notices it and especially if they notice the reaction to that purloin in the previous game they might say you know what matahari has already put suspicion on an entire conversation for something they're worried they missed or absolutely did miss in this case maybe i don't need to finish especially with all these people going to statues instead we're going to bug on our way into the window pad here and it might be suspected, but suspected at worst, 
and I don't even think it matters. The shot's gonna come off on Ponytail. Second statue visit, probably just credited with a bug like anyone else. Actual bug happened just a few seconds before, but Klaus was never even on the radar. Matahari, impatient to spy, impatient to sniper, and Klaus wins handily, six to two. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like running through the potential people it could be. Now, the thing is, I really feel like um, uh, I'm worried with how rushed and um, uh, uh, kind of loose uh, uh, Mata played, where that could be just anybody that was treating this as very casual, you know, mm -hmm. just like kind of just playing it through. So I wouldn't put it past that, but kind of playing in good faith. Um, and I'm just saying that, uh, that whoever is playing here is kind of playing their normal games. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go like iron like mid iron through one of the mid of uh, one of the other divisions or yeah. just there that's not participating in SEL that much not that much competition. So that was inspects done for Ponytail. Did walk by the ambassador and do a weird little stutter step entering the conversation at about 227. That's about all I could think of. But notice there was no banana bread, fake or real. So that is a pretty impulsive shot. You're crediting them with an awful lot. Not only the bug, which. I'm not sure it looks that suspicious, but fair enough. It's Tayen. But what are you thinking you missed? Two prints? Maybe forgetting? It can happen. Sometimes you can just forget the contact hasn't gone off. Either way, it's a pretty aggressive shot and a pretty easy win for Klaus. Uh, don't really have much in the way of a guess, except that, yeah, I'm going to lean towards two slightly less experienced players, uh, particularly Mata. I would say uh, paranoid sniper shots, kind of the hallmark of someone a little less experienced. It's, a, it's kind of a a hump that we all have to get over as Sniper, and some of us never entirely do. Um, it's a constant struggle. It's something we relapse into a lot, too. I'm sure you, you and I both understand that very well. So I'm going to say, yeah, a little less experienced here. I'm a little less certain about Klaus because they kind of put it together at the end. But when you're playing someone like that who's missing those kinds of things, it can make you look better than your moves actually are, too, right? So because you're playing off your opponent a little bit, and it makes it much harder to gauge Klaus's skill level, I think.